Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Barsham, Yahweh Shai, double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. This is Pai Ala from the GMS London camp, and um, I just want to read through this parable dealing with um, the Lord's money. All right, we, you know, apostles gave out an order, which, you know, through the Spirit, it's been done since we're in a year of you know, the triple D, man, death, diligence, and destruction. So, we should, we, you know, we should be pumping up the volume as he is, you know, you got brothers like the Apostle Taha dropped, like he, like he said, 20 videos in one week. So, he, spirit's on him heavy and he's pushing out this truth, man. And that spirit, you know, is going to have a trickle effect on those men you know that the spirit is upon okay they're gonna follow follow in his stead as him being a great example for those you know that, that are underneath him okay and for the rest of israel as well man those those other camps that are in israel to show diligence man you know great millstone is a beacon of light in this israelite thing man okay so um, I just want to go dealing with that, man. You know, we're all given a measure of faith, okay? But um, let me let me read with this, read into this, and I'll, I'll grab precepts and delve into some information. So this is Luke nineteen and twelve. He said, "Therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom, and to return." Now, a certain nobleman is Yahweh Shai, and you know. He, he he departed onto the heavens and is on the right hand side of the heavenly father but he's going to come back with a vengeance so it tells you in Acts the first chapter in Revelations 1 and 7 that he's going to come back man okay and he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them occupy until, until I come alright so when he came back and he supped with the apostles he opened up the understanding then he left and then they had to wait. And basically what happened when Yahweh went, he, he opened up the seals of the book. The comforter came down and opened up the minds of, you know, the apostles at the time. And it's trickled down, trickled down to all the churches. But in, in this time, the same things happen again. We've been raised, as it said in Revelations, the 11th chapter. Uh, and it also says the wisdom of Sol Solomon were made to stand, man. And they, they great fear fell upon them. That's the time we're in right now, man. We're in a time of basically showing our diligence and, and pushing this word out heavy, man, in accordance to the measurement of faith that we're given, the dispensation that the Heavenly Father has bestowed upon each and every man. Okay, we're part of a body, the body of Yahweh Shai, and all of us, you know, we're, the arm ain't there to be the leg, and the leg ain't there to be the head, nor is, you know, the finger there to be the ear. We will have our set service that we're set to do. And you can equate that to our measurement of faith, all right? The Lord bestowed upon us different measures of faith. And when you deal with the measures of faith, basically what you're dealing with is different spiritual gifts, okay? Let me just grab this scripture quickly. This is Romans 12 and 3, all right? Um, for I say, for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, nor to f let me read that again. For I say, through the the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as Yahweh have dealt to every man the measure of faith. Okay, we've all been bestowed a certain measure of faith. That we are basically to to utilize to the greatest ability that we can we can do, man. All right. Okay. And when we're when we're exercising that measure, we're exercising it to the fullness to fulfill this scripture. This is Ephesians four and thirteen. Till we all come in unity. You, you can read this chapter. It's a good chapter dealing with you know gifts. 
because it, these talents that we have is a gift, okay? Ephesians 4 and 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Yahweh unto the perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Yahweh Shai, which ultimately is only going to come to pass when? When Yahweh Shai um, basically appears in the heavens and we, we change in accordance with 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That's when we're going to be made perfect, all right? And that's what we're waiting for. But until that time, we're still working day by day. It tells you how the, the, old, the, um, the old man dies and the new man grows every day, man. So we're, we're basically um, growing onto that stature day by day. But then we're going to come into perfection in Yahweh Shai's appearing. Okay? So now... Head back to Luke. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy until I come. Okay? And those pounds uh, can be equated to talents. Alright? The, the parable of the talents. And when you deal with the word talent, Talent goes back to, they, they say uh, that's a talented individual, like LeBron James, for example, Michael Jordan, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, Floyd Mayweather. You may say in, in an athletic um, field, you may say they're talented individuals, but that word of talent actually goes back to this parable here because talent is bestowed by the Heavenly Father and really the talent that we're given is a measurement of faith and a talent is what was used in biblical times as a measurement of um of of weight which you know basically was about 75.5 pounds okay or about 32 kg so that's a that's a heavy you know a mass of of, of weight man and it tells you in Romans 11 that the, you know the depths of the riches basically telling you that this word is is our is is our riches is our wealth is that is that talent that we have the the ability to go into the scriptures and break things down that's the ability that we've been bestowed in accordance to that talent okay so that's our money this is the lord's money they gave to us basically that we're given to utilize okay now, if you if you had seventy five pounds of of um, gold or silver, thirty four kg of, of gold or silver, that's a hell of a lot just for one talent. Okay, ten of those, that's that's a lot of you know five. That's that's a lot of weight, man. All right. So reading on, um, he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Okay. This is the Lord's business, and we're to work it and make you know utilizing our our talents to the best of our ability to to forward the faith, okay? Because there's there's work to do, man. We're here for the perfection of the faith of of the the ministry, man. The Lord chose great men who, in turn, you know, what well, the Heavenly Father gave those men to Yahweh Shai, who in turn He bestowed upon them. Their talents, their wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which they pass on to more men, and it trickles on and down and down, basically to the fulfilling of bringing in all the all of the elect. All right. But his citizens hated him, and sent a message after him saying, "We will not have this man to reign over us." And it came to pass when he returned, having received the kingdom, then he rec commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he have, um, had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained, gained by trading, tra trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound have given has gained 10 pounds. And he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou has been faithful in a very little, you have authority over 10 cities. Okay. So that's uh, the first servant worked that penny to the maximum, man, to the point where the Lord rewarded him, man, okay? 
Our reward ain't in this place. Your reward is not going to be the woman you get, you lay with, or the money you make, the car you drive. Our reward is in the in the heavens, man. You know, the Lord said it, man. If if anyone follow me and don't hate their life, <laughs> then he's not worthy of me. And that that re really, a, you ask a Christian about that, they ain't gonna understand that shit because they're gonna they're gonna be screaming prosperity. Whereas the Lord was talking about suffering and enduring, Acts fourteen twenty two, all right, through much tribulation, uh, Revelations two and ten, man, it says that you have to be prepared to die, suffer tribulation ten days and be delivered, or even or you know be faithful unto death. So that's something that we're really being faced with, okay? Death. That's that's a a you know a real possibility in its truth, okay? So reading on. Um verse eighteen, and the second came saying, Lord, thy pound of gain gained five pounds. And he said he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came saying, Lord, behold, there is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Okay, and you got people that, down to even these scoffers, they, they, actually, they actually are aware of the word. They have some form of <laughs> understanding to a degree, but they, they, they've corrupted the little understanding that they have. Okay. But you got people that are out there, they, they fully know they're capable of going out there to the highways and byways and, and teaching people and bringing them into the fold, but they ain't utilizing that talent, okay? They they became weak and, and fell out of, of you know, the, they, they look at the Lord in an unfavorable light, okay? For I feared thee because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou laidest not down. And reapest that thou didst not sow. Okay, the, heav the heavenly father's son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls um, Jesus, is an austere man, okay? He's a harsh man. Like they say right now, in these financial hardships, we're going through austerity. Okay, financial hardships, austerity. The Lord's about, he's an austere man. This this word, when you, when you are baptized, okay, in the washing of the by the washing of the word, it tell when you go back to the baptism of John, he said that the the man that came up comes after him will baptize with fire, man. You gotta go, and that's not literal fire. That's talking about the furnace of affliction. That's what we have to endure, man. We gotta go through that furnace of affliction. You may be, and this this is if you don't know, okay. This is so you know, man. When you come. Hey, you could be homeless, you could be broke, you know, you, I mean, your woman can leave you, your family can leave you to where you, you have no connection with your family whatever, whatsoever, okay, or they, they you know, they, everything, anything and any everything you could think of is a possibility, okay, in terms of hardships, but you have to understand that the Lord is doing it to purify you. Man, the Lord wouldn't wouldn't put you through nothing if you can't handle it, man. If you're going through that shit, man. Salak, yo. If you're going through that shit, man, just 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 know, man. Yo, chuck chuck your fucking chin up and put your chest out and enjoy that shit, man. You know, and 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 the best way to do that is by what prayer, man. You are cast your lots upon the Lord, man. The Lord is the one that's going to persevere. It's going to drive your spirit through those hard times, man. All right? When you when you may be in a jail cell facing death, man, that's a real thing that can happen. But you know what you got to do? You got to remember everything you learned before that, that, that moment you came there. Because if you ain't got that, that's when you're going to flip, turn, and take that chip. All right? Then you're going to lose the battle for your soul. So this is this is what we're fighting for. We're fighting for our spirit, for our soul, to be included in part of to to be written in the kingdom of heaven, right? Everything's predestined, predestined anyway, man. But we got you got to fuck it out in this shit, man. Then you, could, you can't get you know 
bro, bro, you know, I ain't even gonna front. I've been depressed for the past couple fucking days, man. Like this, this, this truth ain't no joke, man. It, you know, but you gotta keep. We gotta keep going. We gotta keep pushing. Cause it, you know, she ain't. She ain't gonna change, man. <laughs> it ain't gonna get easier. It's gonna get harder, man. This is right now. It's light work. This ain't even when it's when it's real fucking. You know, pressure. You know what I mean? Like this is this is we. You know, we can still go down to your local, um, your local um, supermarket and buy some organic salmon and shit, man, and fry that sharp. Some wild caught um, salmon. There's gonna be a time where there ain't gonna be be a, a possibility, and your faith is gonna be brought into question. All right. So reading on. Um, and he saith unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knowest that I was an austere man, taking up what, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Therefore. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? Okay, so he said you should have basically you should have just put it to the bank with, uh, with, with and got some interest, man. And listen, you know, like when you do, doing these videos, you can just do basic videos, man. If the spirit, if if you if you you know any talent you have, man, utilize it, man. Make full use of it because it, you know everyone's got a talent, man. You know you you'll be surprised who who will who will, um the laws. You gotta look at it like this, man. The fact that you're awake to this word, there's a there's a place for you within this faith. All right. The fact that you know the things you know in your head. There's a place for you in this space of the word. So that means you need to work your penny, man. That means you're here for a reason. If you don't work it, then you don't think you... You ain't showing no faith, man. You ain't going to work that that money. Then you don't believe... You don't believe that the Lord made the right decision. You're fucking it up for yourself, man. So you know you need to go out there and get, go out and get that, that interest. Get that money on that, that, that pound that the Heavenly Father gave you, man. For Yahweh Shai. Put your talents to use, man. You can always, you can always, since on the subject of talent, you, you know, they, they always say that, you know, there's people, sports athletes that never make it. They say they were talented, but they weren't dedicated to the to the craftsmanship. Take, for example, and this is an example I, I looked, I, I came across before, Roy, Roy Jones Jr., probably one of the most talented boxers at one point, was just knocking um, niggas out the box, man. <laughs> it was knocking them out easily, taking them out, and and doing it in an amazing fashion. A very, you know, you know, the Most High, the Heavenly Father, put that gave him those hands. But then, guess what? He didn't work. He, he when when that talent, when he's you know, that talent slowed down. His his body started to get older. And weren't as sharp as it once would. That's when he started losing. All right, but you have a man like Floyd Mayweather. He was a, he was a contemporary of Roy Jones Jr. Consistent. All right, and he weren't being mentioned during that time as a pound of pound pound for pound great the, uh, on on that level. But guess what? He, the longevity and the consistency allowed him to you know be placed upon there, place up there. And that, that was because he worked his talent, man. He worked that talent and utilised it by being consistent, all right? And that's the same thing where to be consistent and, and fully working this, you know, this talent to the best of our ability. And he said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound and give it to him that have ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he have ten pounds. For I say unto you, that unto everyone that have shall... For I, let me read it again. For I say unto you that unto everyone which have, hath, shall be given, and from him that have not, even that he ha, have shall be taken away from him. But those are my enemies that would not that I should reign over them, bring them heaven and slay them before me. Okay, so the point being, look, if you don't put this to, to use, man, when the Lord makes his arrival, he's gonna, 
it's going to be taken away from you, man. Okay? It tells you, that you know, about a servant that basically knows better. He's going to be beaten with many straps. Okay? So that's, that's you know, we're here to utilize our talent and to basically make full, you know, full use of it. We complement each other, okay? That's what we're part of a body and that's the reason why we're here, man. So with that, man, I pray you edify and say shalom.